My coverage of CES 2019 is brought to you by Corsair, Enermax, Deepcool, and Cooler Master. All right, guys, I'm at Cooler Master now at Palm's Place. They are a sponsor, so big thank you to Cooler Master for sponsoring my CES 2019 coverage. They have a ton of stuff to show, so let's get right into it. Let's start off over here with the Q500 series, which is being upgraded and expanded with a new Q500 case, which they have added a power supply bracket to. So you can mount the power supply at the front of the case, and that allowed them to expand the motherboard compatibility, so it now allows a full-size ATX motherboard in there, not just micro ATX. This has been a very popular case for Cooler Master, largely due to its flexibility, as well as its very reasonable price. Here's a look at the white version of the case. The power supply mount would be up here now, and then you can see full-size ATX motherboard support as indicated by the brackets there at the back. Now these are super flexible when it comes to what you can do with them. So original design had airflow coming in the front, lots of mesh, so there was tons of airflow basically. But if you're putting a power supply up there, that does limit the airflow a little bit. So they redesigned so you can have airflow intaking from the bottom and then exhausting at the top. By the way, the side panel is rotatable. So your IO, which is part of the side panel, can be moved. So you can put it on the front here or on the top, or you could even flip it over and put it on the back side of the case. If you're going with the vertical orientation, you'll probably want to put some of these handles on and that will allow it to sit up off of the ground to allow airflow intaking at the bottom. And then we also have accessories, including handles, so a variety of those so you can find a handle that meets your needs. And then here's a couple little accents that they have been working with just to give the case a little bit of pop distinction personalizability, and then there's of course these mesh panels which you can add to the case. And Cooler Master actually designed a special one of these for me. They put my logo on it, which is pretty cool. Of course, they also did it for Gamers Nexus, which is, you know, obviously their logo is vastly inferior to mine, so Steve and I got in a little bit of a fight over whose logo should go on the case. I think I won. Other accessories include swappable panels. I like this one that has sort of a, a fabric overlay to it, and that's uh, mainly because if you're having your airflow come at the bottom of the case, you can add these panels to the fronts to, again, give it a more distinct look. We have a more standard steel panel as well as a brushed aluminum panel as well. Next is the control pad. We actually talked about this on Awesome Hardware at the live show. This was a Kickstarter that uh, Cooler Master put together because they wanted to gauge interest in a product like this. The control pad itself has a wrist rest down at the bottom. It is magnetic. It's got a couple scroll wheels at the top, and then it's got a set of keys. So you can use those for left, right, up, down, or, of course, you can reprogram them however you want because Cooler Master anticipates that there might be lots of people interested in something like this, like my editor, Joe. To that end, we also have a bunch of different keycaps that you can put on there. These are actually etched with different logos on them for different functions. They're also talking about other options that allow you to swap out keys if you switch between different control modes. And that's all real nice, but the main thing about this keypad is that it is analog, or at least it, it accepts analog input. So they're also making a large one for people with very big hands, hence the demo they have here. That's not actually true. This is just a demo to show how it actually works. It's infrared, so there's an infrared sensor on the bottom, and that will determine how far down the keycap is pressed, and that gives you analog control. So it's not just an on-off, it registers pressure in between, and to demonstrate this, they have super hot going on, and this is actually a very good example of it because with super hot, you can just die immediately. Because in super hot, you can move very, very slowly because time only moves when you move in super hot, so pushing the keys down just a tiny bit moves you just a little tiny bit. Uh, definitely gives you a lot more flexibility and control, uh, more of a gamepad experience in some ways, I would say, but you can see how this would be useful for gaming as well as lots of other stuff too with the various keycap sets they have for Illustrator, Premiere Pro, FPS gaming. What's this one? Oh, Photoshop. If you're not aware, Cooler Master makes a ton of products, uh, not just for you, the consumer at home, but also uh, various OEMs. And this is just a, a close-up of some of the technology I wanted to show real quick. For instance, heat pipe design like they did with the original Hyper 212, flattening that and putting it right up against the CPU so you can have more efficient transfer. They've also done a lot of work with vapor chambers here, which is more of a horizontal flow than flow along the form of a heat pipe. Uh, this is a 3D vapor chamber, and they've actually taken the vapor cha chamber and added vertical heat pipes to sort of give you a hybrid design. They've integrated this into a bunch of products so I just thought it was kind of fun that they had these breakouts here where you could see the internals. And I wanted to show you real quick. Let's move on though. At this demo, we have a couple products, the Masterbox NR400 new case on the left, and then the XG Advanced, which is a power supply over on the left. That's the right, that's the left. Now Cooler Master has gotten a lot of critiques on the airflow from that guy right there. Hi, Steve. Hi. What do you, Paul? You made Cooler Master make better products. <laughs> That's just really good timing. So the NR400 over here features a new version of mesh that allows air flow through, but also blocks dust. And of course, this will need to be independently tested in the future. But what they're telling me is that when you have this on the front of a case, 
it's going to act as your dust filter, but it's right on the front. So it's actually kind of presentation worthy too, which is because it's a very fine mesh. It actually looks pretty clean. So if you're using your system over time, you'll probably start to see dust build up right on the front. And that will be more of a visual indicator that you should probably just clean that. Keep your system clean. Give yourself better airflow. So I think that's a good solution. Of course, we'll need to test it. Other than that, this case also features a flush tempered glass side panel over here, and of course, a power supply basement. Oh, and look, a Cooler Master logo power button. Here's that XG750 power supply. It has a logo on the side. It has LED lighting, and this one is 80 plus gold rated. It is a digital power supply. Cooler Master is finally uh, getting ready to launch these, and they're actually anticipating them coming out in like 550 and 650 watt versions, which will be much more reasonable for people who are just building a standard gaming PC. Here's the big brother of that NR400. This is the NR600 ATX. We also have that micro uh, dust filter going on on the front, which is also wrapped around the entire front panel there which is pretty cool. And it actually kind of does an interesting RGB effect. The RGB fans behind it kind of project onto it, and it gives you kind of an interesting overlapping look with that, which, which I thought was kind of cool. Here is a look at those front panels. Only real difference between these is that that one has a cutout for an optical drive because there is space for an optical drive bay at the top of this case. They also have a unique implementation with these three front fans. Just to simplify things for connecting up front fans, especially if you have fans and RGB, they have wired all three of these fans up to a single set of cables, so two cables, and uh, one is a four pin PWM, so you can just plug it in if you just want the fans to spin, and then a secondary one with three pin addressable RGB, uh, so you can plug that in if you want the fans to light up and look pretty. Damn it, Steve. It's up there. So obviously take your pick of what design or logo you want in here. Cooler Master custom printed these for us. They're not going to necessarily be offering these to everyone out there, but they just wanted to show some of the options that are available. And of course to butter us up by showing us our logos on their products. And yes, there's the Gamers Nexus logo as well. You know what's missing here? We don't have a Bitwit logo. Obviously that one didn't make the cut. It wasn't high quality enough. And the last thing I wanted to talk about here is this fan. Fans are important for cooling. Cooling is what Cooler Master does. They're doing their best to reinvent the fan and do it in their own special way. Uh, so first off, instead of a rifle bearing, this fan uses double ball bearings. Uh, this is a prototype, by the way. There's no name for it yet or estimated release date. But I like how it looks because it's sort of different. It's got some brush metal accents on the outside, which does look pretty cool, I think. The Cooler Master logo hexagon is right there in the middle, too. They have a swept fan blade design with a ring around the outside that allows the uh, fan blades to get very, very close to the outer ring of the fan. And then I think one of the parts I maybe like the most is that the actual cables on this are detachable. You can unplug it. It does still have separate cables for RGB and just the fan, uh, which is also very nice. But that's gonna help with daisy chaining, uh, connecting up multiple fans together, and cable management in general. So uh, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for my coverage here at the Cooler Master Suite, Palms Place, Las Vegas, Nevada. Thank you so much for watching. A big thank you, of course, to my sponsors for this event. Cooler Master, of course, as well as Enermax, Corsair, and Deepcool. Stay tuned for more coverage coming at you real soon. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out, and we'll see you soon.